let's just open our minds to other possibilities and uh I'm going to go through these different masks. So at the sleep lab, if you did go to a hospital type of sleep lab and, and get a sleep study done, often the technicians in the sleep lab will automatically just put the patient on a full face mask. The reason for that is it's easier to, to get the, the, you know, the overnight sleep study done. There's no issues with changing it out, et cetera. It may not be the most comfortable mask, but it's the one that we know will always work in, in almost every situation. So yeah, it works in almost every situation, but it may not be the most comfortable type of, of mask. All right, so let's see. Oh my goodness, we've got a ton of comments here. Thank you guys for all of the comments. So uh, so what I wanna do first is just kind of share some information. If you're new on CPAP especially, uh, let me let you see a type of mask. This is actually, uh, what we would call a true full face mask. So I just mentioned the full face that everyone's familiar with. It's kind of a triangle that covers your nose and your mouth. But there's another one out there. Have you ever seen this one right here? This one is uh, it's really a full face mask. So it actually seals around the outside of your face. Even your eyes are within the mask. It's very, very rarely set up because it's tremendously uncomfortable and there's only certain very, very rare situations. But I wanted you to see the entire plethora of different masks that are available out there. So this one is the one that is called a hybrid. This particular mask right here is a mix between a nasal pillow type mask and, and a uh, full face mask. So if you notice at the top of that mask, it looks like a, kind of like little nasal pillows. And then the bottom portion of the ma mask does cover your nose. So I think around 10% of people actually use the hybrid uh, face mask. And I'll tell you what, the people who use the hybrid really love the hybrid mask. So that's one to consider. Now, this is the number one most common CPAP mask. This one is a full face mask. The particular one that I have in the picture there is called the Air Touch. Um, it's designed exactly like the Air Fit by ResMed. The Air Touch, the only difference with the Air Touch is that the portion of the mask that actually is coming in contact with your skin has a sort of foam material on it, so it's super soft. Uh, the downside of that is it's uh, harder to clean. So you can't really clean it, you know, with soapy water. You want to get some mask wipes to clean that air touch mask. And uh, so actually, if you are using a full face mask, I highly recommend a CPAP pillow, something like this with the little uh, half circle cut out of the pillow. Now, you can get a pillow like this, whether you're using the full face mask or not. But um if you're using a full face, it definitely makes sleeping on your side a whole lot, a whole lot more comfortable. So the one I had in the picture of the full face, you see, I got my little, my buddies, my buddies are here with me tonight. So if you're using the full face mask, <clears throat> you can get that pillow. Now here's a different full face mask. This one is a little less expensive. This one is made by 3B. It has the same type of silicone material and it's, far less expensive. I actually want to put this on and let you guys get a look at it. Actually on, I don't know if you can still hear me, but uh, it's got little hooks inside and it's actually very comfortable. All right, so that's a full face mask right there. It seals up. So how do you know purpose of the video? How do you know where to start or what to do? So basically, just ask yourself a bunch of questions. Ask yourself these questions. One, do I have super sensitive skin? Two, do I like to read before I go to bed at night? Or, you know, after you're in bed, you got your CPAP mask on. Do you like to read a little bit? There's a lot of people that love to just read a little bit and sort of doze off to sleep. That's important to know. Uh, have you had nasal surgery lately? Do you have a deviated septum? That's important to know. Uh, do you feel claustrophobic? Does something like this make you feel claustrophobic? That's important to know as well. So asking those questions can actually help you really guide you into, into um, 
knowing which mask is going to work best for you. So if you're sleeping on your stomach, for example, the full face mask is probably the best one. If you toss and turn a lot in bed, the full face mask is going to be the one. If you tend to breathe through your mouth a lot, then the full face mask is going to be the one. So that is uh, how you know you, you need a full face mask. However, if you have sensitive skin or if you like to read before you fall asleep, then you may want to look at some other types of, of masks. This one is the, this one is the uh, also made by 3B. Guy doesn't want to give this mask up. Uh, let me show you another one. This is the nasal N20 mask. That particular one, again, is the Air Touch. And you might have noticed on the 3B mask that I just put on my face, it has these little hooks that hook the headgear into place. But with the N20 uh, Air Touch and the N20 Air Fit, also all, really all of the, the um, ResMed masks have a magnet instead of a hook. And I really like that. You can see that in the picture down toward the bottom on the left, the little circle. That's a magnet. So it makes it super easy to put on and take off. And uh, so let's see, this one, I'm, I'm going to take that back off the screen and let you see this little nasal mask right here. This one is by 3B. And it is actually way less than the one that I just had on. And it also is, it's very comfortable. All right. And you can spin this up. So while you're lying on your back, you shoot the hose up around the the bed post or around the headboard of the bed and over to the CPAP machine. And uh, so the tubing is out of your way completely and you can roll over and sleep on your back or on, on your side or however you, however you want to do it. All right. Good. So that is the in that, that one is the uh, 3B nasal mask. One thing I love about the 3B mask is that when you do purchase one of those, you get all three sizes, you get small, medium and large every time. And that's really cool because you may not know exactly what size is right for you. All right. So let's see. I'm going to check out some comments here before we get into the nasal pillow mask. I see a lot of people entering into the contest. That's great. All right. Good. Type O, sleep well. Uh, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Melissa says, so is it bad that my husband has been wearing his same nasal pillow for two years? Well, you know, I've seen people wear them longer than that, but yeah, it's time to get new nasal pillows, please. ASAP. Uh, give me a call, Melissa. All right. Good. That was a good, that was a good one. So I see people using the nasal pillows, full face. Um, okay. This is interesting. Kimberly Iman actually says that she has both and switches between. That actually is something that I do see a lot of people. And I think it's a fantastic idea because if you've been using CPAP for any length of time, you'll notice that, you know, it just gets old, the same thing all the time. So also you may change positions uh, in different times of the year. You may get hot, you know, in the summer and want to sleep more on your side or vice versa. So it's always good to have options. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let's see here. Here is Bob. Bob, Joplin, Missouri, currently using the Dreamwear full face or the F&P Viterra full face. Yeah, that's some good. That's a good mask there, too. No pro neck. I had three concurrent sleep studies done with different masks each time. That's interesting. All right. Vicki Smith, nasal pillows are irritating my nose. The straight piece version doesn't work for me and currently not using the cloth kind covering covering my nose. It leaks air out of my eyes. You know, Vicky, yeah, those cloth masks are super, super comfortable. Uh, sleep weaver, I believe they're called, but they're they're very hard to make them seal up. But if you're using nasal pillows that are irritating your nose, I have a little trick. Uh, KY, KY, it's water soluble and just put a little bit into your nose. And that provides two things. It actually makes it seal up a little better. Plus it provides a barrier. So it's just not irritating and chapping basically your, your nose. So that's really, really good to think about. So let's see. All right. Got some really good comments. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Base cat, little Dave. I have thought about trying a nose mask instead of a full face mask. 
Yeah, you know, with um, if you're using the full face, you might, like I said, be one of those who just they automatically set you up on the full face mask. It's it's a good idea. Uh, you know, with the nasal, if your mouth, just always remember this, you guys. If your mouth is coming open and you have only nasal, then all of that pressure that's needed to maintain your airway open is actually just coming right out your mouth. Then there's no pressure and your therapy is zero. You're not getting any therapy at all if your mouth is coming open. So with the nasal mask, it's also good to potentially think about using a chin strap. We have several different chin strap options to just keep your mouth closed. Now, some would say that with the nasal pressure and a chin strap that you're going to just have air out your lips. That is maybe yes and maybe no. It depends on the person, not always. So with a nasal nasal type, nasal pillow or a nasal mask, uh, consider a chin strap. And then there's another step that can be taken with the tape to tape your mouth. I don't necessarily recommend doing the tape over the mouth unless you absolutely have to. Uh, but, you know, it is it is an option that is being used out there by, by some people. So let's see. Let's see. OK, good. All right. So we're getting a lot of comments here. All right. Next, I want us to look at the nasal pillows, nasal pillows. So this is a picture of actually, I apologize. That's not really a great, great picture because you can't see. Actually, I can fix that. Let's see here. Let's take that away now. Now you can see the nasal pillows. All right. This one is the P30i and it has nasal pillows. And notice also that the tubing on this one actually connects to the to the top. So a lot of folks like that. By the way, I asked you a question earlier. Do you like to read? This one is the absolute very best one. If you like to read before you fall asleep, because look, there's absolutely nothing uh, around your around your eyes at all. It's completely open. Also, for anyone that feels kind of claustrophobic with all these big bulky masks, this one is a good one. The Swift FX is a good one. And then I'm going to show you one more that's even uh, actually less costly. It's again by the 3B. I like having these 3B ones displayed because they are so inexpensive. And if it's, it, you know, if you want to just try the style of mask, it's a, it's a really good route to take with that. So right here is the 3B. And it's super easy. Nasal pillows are wonderful. And, you know, a lot of people are able to use these without the mouth coming open. And if you can use a nasal pillow without your mouth coming open as you sleep, it's absolutely the best way to go because it's super light. You can sleep on your left side, your right side, your stomach your head, however you want to sleep. You can read as you're falling asleep. Also easy off, easy on. You notice that? Just, just like that. Super easy. All right. So that is nasal pillows. And again, you get all three sizes with this one. So um, skin irritation. Let's talk about skin irritation a little bit. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, even people who don't have sensitive skin sometimes have irritated skin because they're using a, a CPAP mask. And that could be just because you're you're putting it on tighter than it has to be. So I have a little trick that I recommend highly. Try this. Turn turn your put your mask on, but put it on really, really loose, like loosen those Velcro straps. Put it on super loose. Turn the machine on. Obviously, it's going to leak. Right. And then just tighten it up a little bit at a time until the leak stops. And then one more step. You turn your head left, turn your head right, look up, look down. And if it springs a leak, tighten it up a little bit more until you can look and up and down and there's no leak. And that's the point in time that you have the mask on as loose as, as it can possibly be. So it's going to be more comfortable, but it's not going to leak. So that's really a good little process. You know, turn that machine on first, let it leak, you know, do all that stuff and you'll have it on as loose as possible. So. If you strap it down like super, super tight, yeah, you're going to get a problem here, especially if you have a full face mask and even uh, if you have a little bit of sensitive skin. But they do make uh, covers, you know, these little cloth pieces that you can put uh, around the mask uh, that that just provide a barrier between that silicone material and your skin. And that is really good solution for some people. And then if you don't want to go that route, uh, you can buy 
we we can I can tell you mole skin tape M O L E skin mold skin tape comes in these rolls you just get you some scissors and cut you out a little piece put the mold skin tape right there or wherever you're having the problem but almost always this is right here put that mold skin tape there and then put your CPAP mask on and that's going to provide a barrier that is very durable through the night it's not going to come off uh, one thing about that mold skin tape though you you do want it to get wet when you when you take it off uh, otherwise it can actually cause a problem so uh, what most people do who use the moleskin tape is go ahead and put it on and then shower in the morning get it all good and wet and it comes off super easy whenever it is actually actually wet so all right let's see where we stand here um and by the way how's everybody doing tonight i hope y'all are doing well i'm in south alabama we have some storms coming through Nothing major, but uh, but they are coming through. All right. Oh, it's time. It's time. I've been excited to tell you guys about this. So bear in mind that as we're we're about to review the OptoPillow EPAP mask, this is a system that would allow for anyone who just has snoring, no sleep apnea, only they snore. It's FDA approved to actually stop the snoring. Uh, the the way that it works, it actually might help a little with some mild uh, sleep apnea as well. And if you remember some videos that we've done in the past, I described how apneas actually occur. And if you've been following our Facebook group page, I've got a diagram that I've been showing you guys. And it shows you kind of the soft palate and the way that the, the airway is. Apneas almost always, not always, but almost always, apneas happen at the end of exhalation. So we inhale and we exhale. And then at the very end of that exhalation, the airway just closes off. And then you try to breathe back in and you cannot, but you're asleep, okay? So you don't really know what's happening. And that is when an apnea happens. So an apnea is when that breathing stops for at least 10 seconds. Sometimes it's 10 to 30 seconds or 60 seconds or a long length of time. So what if someone invented something that that would at the end of exhalation keep that airway open a little bit well cpap does that so obviously cpap is always going to be the optimal and preferred uh, way to deal with with any sleep apnea but snoring is the same thing it sort of it sort of almost closes off and then whenever you draw that breath back in there's that vibration that happens in there so here it is this is again it's fda approved and it it looks it really looks just like nasal pillows that looks like nasal pillows but here's the genius of it there's no cpap machine going to be connected to this it's just it's just an exhalation port that can be adjusted so let me actually just show you this all right goes on like this All right, so this is the Opti Pillow EPAP. EPAP stands for Expiratory Positive Airway Pressure. Expiratory Positive Airway Pressure. So I'm going to breathe through my nose. So guys, what's happening is as I'm exhaling, there is a sort of like a, a something stopping me from exhaling all the way. It's this it's this little valve right here. It's because there's some pressure at the end of the exhalation that remains in the airway. So it cannot totally close off like it would with with snoring. And um, it also is is adjustable. So this little piece on the end here can be adjusted. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a little it's a little piece that turns. So you can turn it to three different settings, 25, 50, and 75 percent. And depending on how you have that set, it's going to increase or decrease the amount of expiratory positive airway pressure at the end of exhalation. So I see this as possibly something one might use uh, on an airplane. Uh, or if maybe if the power's out and you don't have a backup CPAP battery, 
Uh, so even for people who use CPAP, this might be a good sort of emergency backup kind of system to have available. Or if you don't have apnea and you just snore, then this is very likely going to stop the snoring. Uh, do get checked out for sleep apnea, though, because if you have sleep apnea, uh, you definitely want more than than just just this to stop the snoring. You want something to really take care of the sleep apnea. But this is it, the Opti Pillows. Let me show you a little bit more about this. I want to, uh, I'm going to share our website with you guys uh, if I can figure out how to do it. This is the one that I can never figure out how to do right, y'all. But uh, I think I got it this time. All right, I'm sharing this screen. This is nothing more than the AffinityHM.com website that I'm showing you right here. And I want to make sure you can see that. Let's see. Oh, it's trying to load. Come on. Come on. Where you at? Well, maybe I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. All right. Going to stop that. Stop sharing that screen. Okay. Well, you got to see it, but it is on our website, affinityhm.com. So if you want to check that out, uh, definitely go, go check it out. I think it's an awesome little invention. And uh, so next, uh, if you haven't already done it, guys, y'all got to get into this contest. So type into the uh, comments, no matter where you are, whether you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Facebook group, or wherever this might be going, uh, just type it in the comments, hashtag sleep well as one word with no spaces, and you will be in the contest. Somebody is about to win a gift card. So y'all ready to do that? I hope this will work. So I've got to, uh, I've got to share the screen here for the gift card. So let's try and see if we can do that. There it is. Okay. Are you guys seeing that? Yeah, y'all are seeing that. Good, good, good. All right, so here we go. We're about to do the drawing right now. Let's see who is going to win the gift card tonight, this Thursday night. All right. Da -da -da -da. And the winner of the AffinityHM.com gift card is John Olivola. John Olivola. I bet that's how you say it. John Olivola. So congratulations, John. Thank you for being in the contest. Thank everyone for joining into the contest. That was really super awesome. I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Uh, let's see, John, you're watching on Facebook. So if you would, through Facebook, send to Affinity um, or myself, Chris O'Gwen, either way, a little message with your email address. And tomorrow I will shoot you out a gift card um, to, your, to your email. So, all right, cool deal. Uh, now, what I would like to do finally at the end here is to answer, try to answer some more questions. And let's see, get over here to comments. If you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask, I would love to try to answer them. All right, let's see. Got a newbie. All right, Zach, Zach says that he tried the hybrid, but it hurts your nose. So if if it hurt 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 your nose, it could be a little KY might be something that would solve that, or maybe you're putting it on too tight, or maybe it just isn't right for you. So uh, so that's definitely some some ideas there for you. Muhammad Muhammad, I use the F30i full mask, but it leaks everywhere. The problem is with itching. So you know what? I think that I would recommend some of those some of those uh, mask liners. So look on look on Google for CPAP mask liner for your particular mask and give them a shot. They're not super expensive and just see if that might kind of resolve the, the itching problem that you're having. It also may help it seal up a little better. So maybe solve the uh, leaking problem. Belty Cat. Welcome, Belty Cat. I don't use them, but some people like the Rimsy mask liners. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Rims, Rims, R-E-M-Z-Z. -Z. It's perfect all the way around, but it hurts. Can't get around that. All right. So here's a Facebook user that's saying, waiting on equipment, do not know what kind I'm getting. So, you know, you give them some input whenever you're 
talking to them about the mass uh you know are you claustrophobic do you do you sleep on your stomach on your side that hopefully they'll ask you these questions and not just automatically go to the full face mask i'll tell you guys what i do i have like a little it's like a little treat that i that i go through is i, I just talk to the folks that i'm setting up on cpap every day and uh, i'll ask them all of those questions and try to get a feel for how they sleep are you a rough sleeper you sleep on your stomach on your side do you read and uh and just looking at them and the shape of their face and it just kind of comes to me but i like to if i can if they will allow me to i like to start with the nasal pillow or just the nasal mask if possible and see how it goes for a night and if that doesn't work then we can switch over to the full face mask or do whatever we need to do to to make it work out um but if you can get away with the nasal pillow or the nasal mask it's definitely definitely the better route to take my opinion my opinion all right all right here's a good question uh judy do i need to take my mouth shut if i have a full face mask no, you do not. You don't have to tape, tape your mouth shut at all with a full face mask because you can breathe with a full face mask over your nose and mouth. You can breathe through your nose or your mouth, whatever, whatever you want to do. So don't don't tape your mouth shut in that particular case. All right. We have a Facebook user here. I like the pillows mask the best, but pressure starts blowing out of my lips. I just can't imagine having to put a chin strap on my head and take my mouth shut and be expected to get a good night's sleep. I, I get that. I get that. It's just like too much, too much stuff going on. Um, why don't you try a full face mask? You know, that's what I would say for you. Um, try the full face mask. And even though it, it may, you know, like when I put that mask on, you're looking at me and like, oh God, let's, but from, from my perspective, it's really a lot more comfortable than it looks is what I was getting at. The full face mask is a lot more comfortable than it looks. And um, a lot of people do super well with a full face mask. So that might be something to think about right there. Let's see the original breeze mask. Wow, Dixie, we go way back, don't we? Um, the original breeze mask with nasal pillows. It's almost ear irreparable. I'm hoping to find a new mask with pillows also a side sleeper and claustrophobic. So you know what, since you like the breeze and for those of you who are not aware of the breeze, that was my favorite mask. Whenever it first came out, it was uh, one of the first nasal pillow type mask uh, systems that, that ever came out. And so to still use the breeze, I don't even know where you're finding the breeze anymore, but uh, it was a really super good, uh, super good, super good mask. But since you like that one, I'll bet you would like the P, 30i the one that we had in the picture earlier because it also goes to the top of your head that's where your tubing connects and uh it's super comfortable super good mask p30i all right so let's see here let's not be getting a lot of a lot of questions here thanks can you explain your your dislike for using mouth tape at night all right um yeah the the reason uh, I'm not I'm not trying to dissuade you from using it, if, especially if your doctor or your provider has asked you to use it. It's it's uh, it, it may be even, you know, not easy to explain. But but the main reason is because when chin straps first came out many, many years ago, it was a big deal that the chin strap had to be flexible. So people were using like nasal pillows or nasal mask with a chin strap. And the reason that we were trained that the, the chin strap was flexible was that if someone were sick, you know, middle of the night and stomach virus or something, and if, if you needed to throw up, you would need to be able to open your mouth and get that out so that you wouldn't be aspirating anything back into your lungs. So with mouth tape, that's the same sort of concern. So I don't know if that's a reasonable concern or not. Uh, I do know, like I said, a lot of people do use mouth tape and it's being used all over the place and it's effective and it does absolutely work. Is it safe? That's, I guess, for you and your doctor to decide on that one. But that's the reason that I'm, I'm a little hesitant with the with the mouth tape. So I hope that answers your question, John. It's a great question. All right. Here's uh, Melvin. I wash my nose pillows daily, but I change them out every two weeks. What do you recommend for the change time on the nasal pillows, Melvin? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I don't think they need to be changed out that often. 
Uh, washing them every day is a very good idea. Just a little simple, warm, soapy water washing on a daily basis. Uh, changing them out. Uh, nasal pillows, I mean, they, they can last a long time, uh, especially since you're keeping them clean. So uh, how often will your insurance buy you new ones? If, uh, if you're Medicare, then I think they get new ones every three months. If you're more a private insurance, it may be six months or even some private insurances are once a year. So I would say at least once a year, um, at the most every three months, somewhere in there would be the answer for that one. All right. So Belty Cat, as far as I know, we are still expecting replacement machines. So we're talking about the recall. As far as I know, we're still expecting replacement machines from the recall. Is your is, is your understanding? Yes. Yeah. I believe that they are still going to replace all of the machines that were recalled. I haven't heard about them repairing any. I haven't heard that at all. Not saying that's not happening. It might be happening that they're repairing them. But uh, for the most part, actually, everyone that I've heard that has received a service, it's been a replacement and it's been the Dream Station 2 that, that everybody's getting. So that is my understanding. Yes. All right. All right. Let's see. Judy, I need a full face because I'm a mouth breather. Uh, would I need a chin strap with the Opti pillows? Well, it now if you're using regular nasal pillows with a CPAP machine, I'm not sure if that's what you're asking. But if you're using nasal, regular nasal pillows, you might need a chin strap, but not necessarily. So even though you're using a full face mask in the past, uh, I don't know if you're a mouth breather or not. But uh, I would recommend try the nasal pillows without a chin strap and but have a chin strap handy. And if your mouth does come open while you're sleeping with the nasal pillows, it's going to wake you up. So if you're waking up with the mouth open, definitely, you know, pop on the chin strap and that should that should do the trick. All right. So let's see. Last question. Last question we got right here from Judy. What is your take on still using the so clean machine or similar oh my god i'm so glad you asked well the so clean machine i'm i'm not i'm not com convinced a hundred percent that the so clean is the problem because a lot of people who never use so clean and they were using the dream station they still had the disintegration of the foam so there's a lot of machines that never use so clean the foam is still disintegrating so i can't say a hundred percent that the SoClean caused the problem. But I think, this is my opinion, I think the SoClean made, made it worse. I think it made it worse for the people who, who have the Dream Station and using the SoClean. So, you know, um, it's probably going to be some sort of mix between those two things. Now, the SoClean is different from other CPAP cleaners. Uh, if I had a so clean right now, I think I would stop using it. I would stop using it just to be sure and get one, a different type of ozone cleaner that does not send the ozone into your CPAP machine. You know, sending the ozone into the CPAP machine, there's more going on in there other than just the foam. I mean, there are silicone parts, et cetera, that, that are very expensive to try to get them replaced. So it's best just just let's not send ozone inside of our CPAP machines. Instead, get one of the ozone cleaners, which there's several other ones. We have them on our website that you disconnect your hose, you disconnect your water reservoir and take your mask. You put all of that into a bag and, and clean it with ozone separate from the CPAP machine. Well, this way you never have to worry about it damaging your CPAP machine. That's for sure. So that's that's what I think. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. I appreciate it. All right. Well, actually, I know I said last question, but here we got a, a big one. Let's see what this question is from a Facebook user. Can you explain to me why my nose runs worse than a three-year-old, please? I don't use my heated hose, can't take the warm air. I use minimal humidity because the more I turn the humidity up, the more my nose runs. Well, uh, so normally I would have almost answered that question saying you need more humidity until that last part. So I'm going to say that it's got something to do with some irritation of the airflow, possibly. So the best thing to do, doctors have some solutions for that. Some nasal sprays, maybe maybe they will recommend an over-the-counter type. Uh, definitely don't use Afrin or anything that's like addictive, okay? But talk to your doctor, talk to your provider, and check into some nasal sprays that can be used, you know, ongoing, you know, for more than just a day or two. 
And uh, that might kind of dry things up and soothe things down to the point in your nose that that, that hopefully will take care of it. But normally um, for others, um, if you have your humidity set too low, your nose can can kind of try to run uh, to compensate for that dryness. It's just trying to humidify the air that's going into your lungs. So often with a little bit of a sniff, sniffly, you know, runny nose, the solution is to increase the humidity. Uh, but that didn't seem to be the case with you. So, all right, we're good. So guys, that is everything that I had for tonight. Let me just make sure we covered everything. And, uh, I appreciate y'all being here. Thank y'all. I appreciate you. And uh, look forward. It, every Thursday night, I'm going to be here. So I have another show planned for next Thursday night. Check out those Opti pillows over on AffinityHM.com. It's in the CPAP mask section. I was unable to show you that, but it's over in the CPAP mask section. I got a nice little write-up to tell you all about it. So that's everything I got. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of Thursday night and a beautiful weekend. And I hope the weather is warm and mild and beautiful. So again, I, I appreciate it. Y'all all have a wonderful night and sleep well. And